Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I thought I would give you my final update of The Reading Rush. So that will be an update just on the last book that I read last week. I thought I would also then give you my final stats from The Reading Rush and how I got on, as well as um, just talk to you a little bit about some of the controversies from The Reading Rush organizers, because some of those things didn't quite sit right with me and I wanted to talk about them as I've been obviously hyping up the reading rush and talking about it so much on my channel recently. So first update is the final book that I read. So in my last video I said that I just finished reading The Boundless, uh, sorry The Beholder and I was then going to start to read The Boundless which is the uh, sequel to The Beholder. So um, as I said in my last video The Beholder covers, um, follows Sela in like an alternate earth and she is the Seychelles or Seychelles of Pontamac and um, she has been publicly humiliated and rejected by her love interest Peter and because of that her evil stepmother says that she has to instead go in a ship called the Beholder across the ocean to try and find a new partner and obviously so she can then produce an heir. Um, her stepmother has already arranged all of this behind uh, Sila's back and her father's back. She's already, you know, got a load of prospective suitors and arranged appointments and organised like this grand tour for her. So the uh, beginning of the Beholder then has Sila go off into the ocean uh, over to Europe. She visits the Prince of England at Winchester Castle and then she also visits another man who lives in Norge. So much like the Beholder, um, the Boundless has a lot of allusions and references to fairy stories. So as I explained in my last video, the Beholder has every few chapters a page which is like marbled in grey and it has on there a extract from a myth or a fairy story and then underneath it has the English translation of that. And a similar thing is done in The Boundless. So in The Boundless, she goes to visit her next suitor. And there is a lot of allusions in there to uh, 12 dancing princesses. So she stays in this castle and she's staying in a room with 12 princesses who will obviously be her prospective sisters. And the first night she gets drugged and then... Um, the next day, obviously, she wakes up and is like realizes that she obviously realizes she has been drugged. So the next night, she pretends to fall asleep so she can try and figure out what exactly the sisters are covering up, and she finds that they are sneaking out of the castle and going to a dance every night, which is much like um, the Twelve Dancing Princesses myth, um, which is by the Grimm brothers. It's from the Grimm fairy tales. Um, so after that. Um, their father then eventually finds out what's been happening, whereas previously the sisters had managed to keep it a secret. And so uh, Sela is then punished. And while she's angry, she says, oh, well, the Empress wouldn't approve of what you're doing. And he's like, oh, really? How would you know? How about you go and visit her? Uh, and it turns out that uh, the Empress is, um, she runs the new empire that was um, built up after England's empire fell. And it's kind of, meant to be I guess a bit like it's it's basically an evil empire they all the soldiers wear grey uniforms so you know they're evil <laughs> and um, you know every kingdom that she takes over um, is given a new name and it's forced to abide by her they get have all their books taken away they're forced to renounce all their religion and they all say that her real name is Baba Yaga or Baba Yaga uh, which is a obviously a reference to more myths and fairy tales. So I really like that aspect of it. I like um, I love reading retellings of fairy tales and myths. And again, this story in elements of it did remind me of Girl Serpent Thorn that I read quite recently. So um, I thought that was really fun. I think um, what I would have liked to have seen, similar to The Court of Miracles, was a bit more character development throughout the story. Sela herself seems to have really changed during when I started reading The Boundless. She's now become really outspoken and like a real feminist, whereas in the first book she was a lot quieter, she was a lot more shy. And I do understand that obviously a lot's happened in between those two books, but it just seemed like a real change all of a sudden. Um, you know, from the first book where I was thinking, well, you're not 
currently you're not fit to be a leader and I think you know you could do with better life experience and then in the second book suddenly she's really strong and independent and everything so um that was kind of interesting I thought the story was really fast paced it really kept me interested I was really invested in what would happen and I was obviously really rooting for Sela and the crew of the Boundless as well um and I really liked that you know it does have some inclusive characters so um she meets a character who is secret is a Muslim and is practicing her religion in secret, which I thought was really nice. Um, and sort of, you know, nice to see that represented. Um, but yeah, overall, and also the ending as well, I thought was not what I expected. I did personally feel really sorry for the captain of the Boundless because he just can't catch a break the whole way through. Um, you know, Sela really or it never forgives him for anything. And he even says at one point, like, why can't you just, you know, forgive me for stuff? Um, obviously, there's meant to be um, romantic tension between the two characters throughout the whole thing, like, uh, and which did, you know, it carries on, I guess. But yeah, I was, I felt bad for him. And that, you know, she is always, you know, she's mad that he didn't come and rescue her. And then she's mad that he tried to rescue her. You know, he just couldn't seem to catch a break. So, um, yeah, I felt really bad for him throughout the whole story. Um, but overall, yeah, it was a really fun read. I gave it four stars as well. But, um, yeah, The Boundless is definitely a very different type of story to The Beholder. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is that's all the books that I finished for The Reading Rush. So five books altogether. So Wasteland and Alathia, which were ones that I was reading for the book tour. So they weren't technically part of my reading rush, but I'm going to count them since still books <laughs> that I read that week uh, and then I read The Course of Miracles, The Bound Boundless and The Beholder. So overall that is 2,154 pages which I think is just incredible. <laughs> um, my other stats were that um, I had three prompts for the reading rush that I completed so they were a book that started with the which was either The Beholder or The Boundless um, a book that takes place in a continent that's different to the one that you live on. So The Beholder and The Boundless all partly take place in what's uh, America or like the fictional New World America. And the final one was to read a book that matches the colour of your birthstone. And that was uh, the prompt that I read The Court of Miracles for as it's like a dark blue colour. Uh, and my birth date, as I've said before, is in December. So um, I also received eight badges on the Reading Rush website. So again, you know, quite pleased with that. Um, as well as the three prompts, I also got badges for things like having a YouTube, you know, a YouTube channel and posting something on Instagram. But I definitely feel like um, in reflection, I was way too optimistic with the books that I was going to read. And I should have realised that if I think if I hadn't had to read a couple of books for book tours that week, and if I've been a bit more organised and on top of things, then um, I might have been able to finish all of those. But obviously I should have thought about that a bit more and, yeah, just been less like me, I guess. <laughs> um, the other thing is that I should have perhaps picked some shorter stories. So um, as I said in my original TBR video, I had chosen to read The Luminaries and that's over 800 pages. And it was only then afterwards when I looked at other people's TBR videos and most people had chosen fairly short books, or at least books that were, you know, quick to read, like um, young adult fantasy and things like that. And I was just like, huh, that would have been a really smart thing to have thought about and planned beforehand. But it's fine. I'm still happy with how many pages that I managed to read. Um, I just need to manage my expectations for myself a bit more. But I think that's a life lesson rather than just a reading rush lesson. <laughs> so the other thing that I wanted to talk about was that there have been a few controversies around the Reading Rush and the organisers, and uh, which are Ariel and Raylene. So other people have made better videos on this than I have, but I just thought it was uh, two things that I wanted to really discuss and mention because they didn't sit right with me. I've done a lot of videos on the Reading Rush and been promoting it a lot and things. So even though I, you know, no one watches these videos really, apart from family and friends, I think it's something I should talk about. So the first one was about the prompts that were chosen for this challenge. So I think um, the organisers, Ariel and Raylene, probably came up with these prompts back in sort of January or February time. While obviously they couldn't have known that this would happen when they came up with the prompts back in 
sort of January or February or whenever it was, I do think that Ariel and Raylene should have thought about that, especially when they got a lot of feedback and changed those ones. Um, the other thing that I was quite shocked by was that there was no, after um, the Black Lives Matter movement, really having more prominence and becoming, you know, a lot more at the front of people's minds after George, George Floyd, I really was surprised that um, there also was no prompt around reading literature by a black author. So perhaps they could have changed the, you know, in retrospect, perhaps they should have changed the reading outside to read a book by a black author. Um, obviously, I didn't personally manage to get to the book I had on my list, which was by a black author, which was Children of Blood and Bone. Instead, I'm going to try and read that this week. I just ran out of time. Um, my main reason for choosing to read The Beholder and The Boundless first was that um, Children of Blood and Bone is also um, has a sequel. And I haven't I don't own that copy, whereas um, The Beholder and The Boundless is a duology and I own both of the books. So that was why I chose to prioritise those. But obviously, perhaps as well, in retrospect, I shouldn't have done that because, um, you know, I haven't um, that week. That would have been the only black author that I would have read. So, um, yeah, so that's, again, some learning for me. But I think also some thoughts for the organisers as well. Um, another thing that happened, if you don't know, was that um, the organisers came up with a book club read, which was Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. And I didn't even know about this until the week of the reading rush. Otherwise, I probably would have chosen to read that as well and or probably tried to read it and then failed to read it. <laughs> um, I helped to organise a book club on Facebook, which is for um, other fans of Black Milk who live in the UK. And um, we have occasionally organised book club reads where we read a book as a, the book and then talk about it afterwards. Um, they haven't always been super successful and had lots of interaction, but the one thing that I have always done without fail is read the book. Like, um, the video, they didn't save it, they haven't got it in their highlights because it was an Instagram Live, but um, I was sat on the sofa reading and my phone sort of beeped, and I had a look, and I saw that uh, the reading rush had gone live on Instagram, and it was um, Raylene and Ariel, and I saw that it was supposed to be like a Q&A and discussion about the book club read but they both said like they hadn't read it and they both kind of laughed about it and then they talked about the comics that they read or like graphic novels that they read um and so it was it didn't seem that they just hadn't had time to read or hadn't you know something personal come up where you would think you know that's fair enough it was seemed to be more that they just chose not to read it um and I just feel, feel like you know regardless of the author um, because I know as well, again, lots of people said about how that's disrespectful to the black community as well. Um, obviously, I can't comment about that part. But for me, I thought, you know, it's quite unprofessional to organise a, you know, a book club and then not read the book um, and not have any apology or explanation. I think even if they'd found another YouTuber that they could collaborate with and ask them to host the book club um on their behalf because they hadn't read it, I think that would have been better. Or even if they just postponed the discussion um, until after the reading rush, maybe when things had calmed down and they had a bit more time, that would have been good. But I think to just not read it is bad. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.